won the right to rest peacefully in Texas water. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. Today I'm coming to you with our March 2023 shipyard update. Uh, get you caught up on what's been going on in the shipyard, what's happening with the ship. Right now, I'm in D26P. This is a sanitary pump room at the very aft end of the ship. The, the sanitary pump, which is to the left of me right here, to, to my left, uh, was used to pump water, seawater, all the way up to the heads up on second deck, so three decks above us, and would uh, that water was used to flush water, the, the waste over the side, the waste of the crew over the side of the ship. This area has, the stern area of the ship has always been fairly problematic, fairly leaky. Uh, so bad we had to put in a concrete patch that was basically the size of this opening and weighed about two tons. Uh, it's a lot of freaking concrete. Uh, to get this massive patch out, well, the shipyard cut the frames down low and up high and just lowered the whole thing down and right now what's happening is the new frames are going in and the new shell plate will go, come on and this whole area will be watertight and good for a good long time. In fact, you're probably out of frame, there's a bunch of other holes that you may or may not be able to see. If you can, you can see how bad this area was. So in addition to the area of D20, the skin of D26 getting redone, um, as we move forward, you can see there's a whole uh, a lot of plate that's going to get re replaced. You know, particularly what's open right underneath the belt armor right here, and then you can see what's low just above uh, the the man lift at the bottom of the blister. This whole area was behind the aftmost blister tank on the starboard side, and well, it was a really difficult place to maintenance and service to keep the water out of. So this area and the area on the port side, same place, has been the absolute worst that we found underneath the blisters. So we're doing a lot of steel inserts here. A little bit of doublers, but for the most part, the bulk of this section uh, below the armor belt is going to get replaced. We're inside one of the new blister modules. So this is gonna be blister tank six, or it is blister tank six. Uh, this tank was hung on the ship uh, earlier this week. Uh, it was built over in the fab shop across the yard, brought over here on a, on a truck, and then craned onto the, to the dock, and then, um, and then craned up onto the side of the ship and kind of fitted into place. Um, Gulf Copper right now is going through a lengthy process of, of doing the final fit out. So you can see from the stiffeners down here where there's new plates being welded on to kind of bridge that gap. So to make the fit up easier, uh, a little bit of space is left, the new plate is welded in and um, to bridge that gap. So even though this isn't fully welded out, it's not a watertight tank yet, it is well on its way to becoming that. Um, these modules, when they leave the fab shop, uh, they are fully uh, painted on the inside. So the coating system that's on the inside of the tank um, is what is going to be in here. Now we'll go through, our Gulf Copper will go through and touch it all up, do a little bit of stripe coating, um, clean up all the abrasions so that these tanks last a nice long time. Uh, and speaking of painting, so, well first, that's the original hull. And this is the new skin of the blister. So the original hull right here, what we're doing with it, we're going through doing a commercial blast, uh, not doing it to white metal, and then we're coating everything with a, a rust uh, reformer, uh, a rust inhibiting pro product. So basically what's left of the, of the flash, it converts it to um, iron phosphate, so a very inert uh, material that won't rust. In itself, it kind of acts as a primer. And then on top of that, we're going and applying a commercial grade, uh, marine grade uh, epoxy primer. And that way, this does not rust from the inside out like it has. Having been in most of these blister tanks, uh, when, when the ship was still floating, to pull out pumps, to change out pumps, to well, just keep the ship afloat, uh, this is a night and day difference. I do not feel that I'm gonna lose my life in one of these tanks. Um, like, like I did every time we went, I went to one of those blister tanks, the original blister tanks. Um, I didn't feel like the overhead was going to collapse on me or the deck underneath me was going to collapse or the, uh, well, the side shell kind of blow in a little bit and, and get surrounded by water. So because these blister modules are so long, uh, they are actually the size of two of the original tanks. So we're, we decided to make two tanks into one. So this, this particular blister 
is now the equivalent of two of the original blister tanks. And you can see behind me right here, if there's enough light, where the old bulkhead was. Uh, and behind the camera there behind Kyle is the other, other bulkhead. You can see it extends all the way down. And like I said, anywhere you see light, you will not see light when, when Gulf Copper is done. Um, Gulf Copper, uh, Valcor Energy Services, our project management company, and Sealy Technical Services have done a fantastic job of putting these things together. There are a few surprises along the way, like, um, well, like the, the table of offsets for the blisters not exactly matching the ship. So uh, Sealy Technical Services, the contracted naval architect, uh, built the ship based on the molded offsets and, and then built these blister modules. And we started fitting them up. We found that there was a little bit of issue that they weren't fitting exactly. Well, after investigating, we found that the table of offsets were good up until a certain point. And then beyond that, they were off by like seven inches. And that seven inches was, was what was really throwing us off. And once we were able to find and identify that, that, that deviance, we corrected in going forward, and these modules have been going up like a dream. Um, instead of taking fighting for uh, a week with the first module, this module, which is the, the fifth module, or the sixth blister tank uh, on the starboard side, is, went up very, very quickly. Like I said, it got onto the dock at the beginning of the week, and now it is uh, already partially welded out and, and being fitted out. Um, by in a week and a half, this thing will be fully done. With all this new stuff going on, all the old stuff coming off, well, like the concrete patch here and the foam. By the way, we've removed, our Gulf Copper has removed, and their subcontractor, Horizon uh, Environmental, has removed 173 uh, boxes, so big roll-off containers of, of foam from the ship, which is like 3,400 cubic yards of foam. Um, so now we have all the bulk foam out of the ship. There's some isolated pockets here and there that'll get washed out or blown, blown away with, with uh, the grip blasting prior to painting. And um, on top of that, with the tank cleaning, we have the, the, the tank cleaning crews have re removed well north of 20 cubic yards of just rust from the bottom of the ship. Again, that's one of those big containers, basically. Concrete patches, you know, this is that big one that I was talking about uh, earlier at the beginning of the video, this was two tons, 4,000 pounds of, of, of cement here and a little bit of rebar. Uh, of patches like these, we've, we've removed um, this patch, another patch this size was broken up in place, um, and there's probably around, around a dozen total concrete patches that have been uh, removed from the ship. So our goal, when the ship goes back in the water, these things, which were triage things, they were tourniquets in uh, while the ship was floating to keep the ship afloat, like the foam, these concrete patches, salvage patches, things that in the long term, you know, were beneficial then, but in the long term would be kind of a cancer to the ship because, well, concrete is wet. It kind of stays wet up against steel. It's caustic against steel, and it'll cause the ship to eat uh, itself from the inside out. Same from... Um, the, the concrete cloth that was in the bottom of the ship. I can't tell you how much concrete cloth was removed. Uh, basically from um, the, the stern of the ship all the way up through the, in, through the engine rooms, all of that concrete, or just four to the engine rooms rather, was all removed of, of, of concrete cloth from the, from the inner bottom. Again, it's all triage stuff. And all this triage stuff, it takes time uh, to get it out and it takes money to get it out. And, but we have to. If we don't, we're setting the ship up for a long-term failure. To my professional colleagues and, um, well, and to you guys, if you have a boat at home, keep the, in the bottom of your boat, your ship, your car clean. Keep the water out of it. Um, if you do that, they'll last forever because of this ship, it, it rusted from the inside out. I've got a picture where I can put my hand up through the hole of the ship. It was from where it rusted inside out. It's, it's one of those things. You have to do what you have to do right then, but the goal and what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're not getting back in the spot where we're having to make triage decisions. We're having to make uh, emergency decisions to, to get the ship, uh, to stabilize the ship until we can get to a repair facility. This valve assembly that is in this patch will be pulled out. You see that the concrete's being chipped away and it will be put back in place.
but it will not be connected to the hull. Now, you may ask, well, why are you doing that? Why aren't you just scrapping that? Because that's a lot of bronze there. It's a lot of brass. That'll, that'll fetch a fair penny. We're in the business of historic preservation. So as we start ripping things out, oh, we don't need that valve. Let's, let's just scrap it. Well, what happens when we go to talk about that space, right? And a valve that we could have had that would have made a difference tell, talking about this space, we don't have it anymore. And it, it doesn't cost that much more to save it. And then the money that we would gain from scrapping this far out seeds the, the, the loss of losing these, these pieces of objects. So as you can see here, we, we have most of the port side blister removed. Uh, we're still cropping, our gold copper is still cropping back away up to about the third, a little bit above the 30 foot water line. That's where it's kind of flat way up there. And as you can see, you know, at night they've been going through sandblasting the original hull and um, applying the, the rust converter to, to make all the rust kind of passivate it to make it inert into iron phosphate. And then over the top of it comes the, uh, the epoxy primer, which is really, really good stuff. And um, so we, with that, we, we hope that, well, for the next forever, we won't have to go in here and, and re, recoat these tanks, have to readdress these tanks uh, because the coatings will be intact. Now, as we're going through, you can see that some of these tanks, the the skin, or where, where these blister tanks were, the skin of the original hull is actually kind of in a rough shape. Uh, some of it was a little bit of a surprise, some of it wasn't. Uh, there's a section right here that it looks like the surface of the moon. It was a little bit of a surprise, but that's one of those things why we do the grip blast. It uncovers those weak areas and allows us to go in and fix it. Um, because these are going to be under, the, the original skin will be protected by uh, the blister shell, we are going to go ahead in here and put uh, a doubler plate system over the top of that whole weak area. And we're able to do this because the, the hull here is, is thick enough to take a, a doubler system. If it's thin like it is back aft, or like it's really thin back aft, we're not able to do that. We have to weld in a whole, whole new plates. Um, but we feel comfortable that this is a good cost saving measure because this will be out of the water. Uh, we're able to, um, you know, stretch our, our dry dock budget a little bit further. And speaking of stretching, being able to stretch our dry dock budget a little bit further, uh, all the way forward at, you know, what is just forward to blister tank one, it's really just a fairing. Um, the, um, yeah, you see that oval manway there where the, where the prime, the nice gray primer stops uh, and, and that vertical manway. That is, um, that's a fairing area at, at the forward end of that blister tank. Uh, we, on the port side, we, or the starboard side rather, we removed all of that and rebuilt that completely. On this side, we went through, did a little bit of surveying before, cut some holes into the tank and then used a, uh, uh, a bore scope to look at the condition of the tank and the framing and all that stuff. We found it, it's actually in really good shape. So all we're gonna do with this tank, this will be the sole surviving piece of the original blister system below the water line on the ship. Um, so all we're going to do with this is bring it down. We're going to cut the bottom part off so we can fare it in with like the lower eight feet or the lower section so it fares in with the bottom of the new tanks. So we have a nice clean line running with the, uh, uh, running down the length of the ship and we don't have these weird drag effects going on. Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching the whole, uh, the whole update. Uh, there's a lot of cool things going on. There's some stuff that we've cut out. We're going to try to do updates a little bit more frequently. Yes, I know we've said that in the past, but there's a lot going on. In fact, we haven't even talked about the guns. We keep not talking about the guns because we're just spread so thin. Um, we feel that this is more important right now and we're trying to do this as, get as many updates out as possible. As always, we wanna thank you for, for liking and subscribing and watching our, our, our channel here, watching our videos uh, and supporting this wonderful ship. If you wanna support the ship further, you can like us and follow us on our other social media platforms. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. And then if you want to support in a more tangible manner, you can go to our website at battleshiptexas.org and donate. Or if you would like to get something in return for your, uh, for your support, you can go to our store. We have a lot of cool stuff. Uh, you can now get tumblers that are in the camouflage scheme that the ship wore during World War II. Really cool. My favorite's Measure 21. Also, we are still doing dock tours. We will be doing dock tours until the ship comes off the dock. 
Um, so go to our website, sign up if you want to come see this magnificent ship in person. Have a once in a lifetime rare opportunity to walk under a battleship. Uh, the next one to go to dry dock is probably going to be New Jersey, we hope. Um, outside of that, who knows? And um, next time this ship will go will be in 15 years, and we don't know if the shipyard will be as accommodating as Gulf Copper is to us. But as always, come on, Texas. <laughs>